Hi guys, the room is filling up and I'm glad that you all have made it here to our special educational session, which is uh, Trading Forex during central bank meetings. This is uh, one of the uh, most somewhat at least most interesting uh, news events actually to be traded because number one there's quite a lot of volatility meaning the markets swing quite a lot and during recent events we had seen quite often that uh, market moves were influential to currency pairs uh, uh, kind of leading towards bigger uh, my colleague marius would call it shocks any potential moves into one way or the other and by preparing ourselves uh, to such news events we can obviously find uh, potential trading setups and I would like to go over uh, a few general ideas which might be fruitful and uh, are hopefully as well useful for your own uh, uh, trading. So guys, uh, please let me know if you can hear me all right, if the sound's working out and uh, meanwhile, if you have any questions, just let me know. I'm obviously uh, happy to answer them for you as much as I can. Hopefully there's nothing which uh, I don't have an answer to, but rarely the case. I've been invested in the markets for quite a while. Let's switch it a little bit. Um, I want to make this session a kind of a, uh, break it down towards like th uh, three, uh, three, um, three parts in three parts. So trading Forex uh, now with a prep part. That's the first, that's the headline you can see. So preparation before the news event, then actually at the trading it actual, uh, sorry, at the actual news event and then the aftermath on how we can potentially protect positions and stuff is what I would like to go over here in the next say shouldn't be too long 20 minutes 30 minutes maybe of some sort um, at least uh, what we think we need to prepare in order to uh, uh, bring ideas uh, to the table you can see on the right side that's the uh, building where the European Central Bank in Frankfurt is located kind of a quite tricky building there's quite a few rumors around it um, you can do your own background research on why this building looks like this I find it a, a nice piece of design but uh, it's not about this only because we have central bank meetings and we focus usually when trading such news events uh, on the major central banks uh, recently the bank of japan caught a bit our interest problem they don't have a fixed timing when they set their meetings uh, like the japanese are sometimes not that they are not punctual they are kind of pretty much special compared to the germans at least we focus on the uh, central bank federal reserve the us with their federal open market committee it's called fomc meeting the european central bank obviously some others uh, in retro perspective at least uh, but uh, moving into the future we want to host these ones also again live uh, australian central bank rba bank of england obviously just to name a few i think that's uh, more or less it right oh bank of canada forgot those so federal reserve bank of canada european central bank uh, and the bank of england plus uh, uh, potentially some coverage on the Australian Central Bank. The um, Royal Bank of New Zealand, RBNZ, is a bit tricky because they have exactly their interest rates decision when markets move from one time zone to the other. So it's overlapping and it really makes no sense. Uh, we used to cover these uh, news events with my previous colleagues many years back here at BD Swiss, but it just simply makes no sense because markets are in limbo during those times. So analyze markets about 30 minutes up to 10 minutes before the news come out. For me, I'm always checking markets. I usually check what goes and find and look for potential directions in markets. But if you are assessing potential trading setups, uh, the idea obviously to get yourself familiar into price directions into market moves into where the market's direction in a currency pair might be what we like to do now is to take like an example situation which we like to focus on giving you some practical ideas here and just to find potential trading setups until uh, the market uh, hits a certain uh, time so let me uh, open now the meta trader there we go meter trader for here and open the euro dollar currency pair as if there were uh, or as if there was uh, a potential news event and interest rate decision brewing let's say um, the FOMC meeting is due and uh, the FOMC meeting is due in potentially uh, five minutes 10 minutes say so we now would like to uh, find potential uh, trading ideas and uh, focus on uh, charting setups that's the next point check for potential uh, trading setups um, 
In this case, we have defined that we will focus on US dollar denominated pairs, the three of those. So we could say Euro dollar, pound US dollar, and maybe the Australian against the US dollar to look for potential entry and exit opportunities. The exit opportunities are also more the aftermath, but obviously we want to plan ahead on how we can use uh, any potential trading direction, any potential trading setup in order to find uh, fruitful trading strategies with a potential uh, plan on how uh, to trade the market accordingly. Euro dollar currency pair now on the long term daily chart. Let's can potentially let's move towards uh, the hourly chart. Um, again, that's some sort of uh, one idea which could be which could lead to potential um, trades uh, here in this case. And uh, let's move to the actual example, the um, uh, central bank, the Federal Reserve with their FOMC um, meeting. So at uh, the full hour, they usually have the interest rate decision. This quite often leads to certain market momentum. Half an hour later, they have a press conference. We come to this later as well, but um, that's at least on how we want to plan because uh, either way, markets can be influenced. Say, we are now a couple of minutes before the news event and we uh, find certain levels. Let's say here, the market in the euro dollar is currently trading at 109.75, potentially ready to break the lows, which actually it looks like it uh, could happen. But we have a bit of an issue because uh, the next support level is uh, due as well, and that's just a couple of pips lower. So the idea, we are about 10 pips away, the idea would currently be just uh, for illustration uh, here, let's have a sell stop order potentially in the market at um, 109.65. No stop loss since it's a, a live trading here. Um, we, do, we would like, not like to have uh, a stop loss in place as the market might swing into either direction. But what we look for at the moment here with this example is uh, that uh, there is a technical support level which could be broken, but there is another lower support level which is uh, the trickier one which we look for when assessing this market currently back to our um, uh, potential trading setup now we would need to look for the economic uh, calendar and uh, the economic calendar obviously uh, gives us the input on uh, when the news event approaches first of all what might happen and what the current situation is giving us uh, in terms of potential market direction in this case now we're looking for some potential strength of the us dollar why first of all and that's again it's just an anticipation for illustration purpose here right now because uh, we don't we don't have an actual a live a trading event a central bank meeting which we could use so i'm making this up right now but the idea is that recently inflation had kind of stabilized a little bit and that's the live uh, the real analysis uh, uh, currently inflation is stabilized a little bit yet the central bank the federal reserve uh, in terms of uh, Jerome Powell spokesman was saying that hey we usually actually we usually see that inflation is still higher compared to our 2% level so we would need to increase interest rates further and the anticipation of the current uh, imaginary uh, central bank news event sits at uh, an expectation of a 25 basis point rate hike so 0.25% increase in interest rates this is why we would expect if this is going to happen, everyone expects this currently, but if this is going to happen, the US dollar could strengthen and hence the Euro US dollar currency pair could weaken somehow further, which uh, obviously has the uh, potential impact here in markets offering some sort of further adjustments here, further motivation uh, of, uh, and for this market running back uh, to the downside. So in this case, uh, there is the expectation uh, before the news event, and we are looking at uh, several news, uh, uh, sorry, currency pairs. Uh, let's stay with the hourly chart here for a while. We would have the entry opportunity here. There is a bit of a support level, which we identified, by the way, we could also drag this level here um, to the left side of the chart and we could drag uh, this uh, this level here as well to the left side of the chart we have certain and several supportive ranges here so if this is going to be broken further momentum to the downside might occur a potential and actually this trading setup might make even sense right so it's just like that we are building a news event according and surrounding uh, sur around this news event and then there would be a potential target level should the market fall the next level where the market might stop could be the bottom uh, here um, 
of, uh, of the line. So we got to be a bit quick now because the news event is quickly approaching. So let's uh, quickly check further for potential trading setups. Euro dollar is giving us some weaker opportunity, potentially the pound on the other hand, uh, is looking slightly stronger, we might say. It's still quite supported. Yes, the market at the moment is falling a little bit, but uh, what if what if the pound uh, gears up some sort of momentum? What if the pound in the next uh, time frame uh, doesn't fall back further? We could say, okay, maybe there's an opportunity uh, for the pounds to rise and we could have a counter trend trade, 127.65. That's the other opportunity by stop. I'm not really a big fan of uh, limit orders here. 120, hold on, 120, mm, 127, 12765. So, oops, that was the line wrong area here. Um, that's 20 pips away. So we could see as well that uh, the uh, pound US dollar, for example, uh, sits at the current area. And I uh, hope you can uh, you can see that here. This trend line is the crucial uh, part for me. If in the next 47 minutes, well, again, it's not really matching with the news event because the news event is kicking in put, uh, uh, potentially, uh, um, hypothetically, in the next few minutes. If this market pops back to the upside, we have the strong support area. We have this 50 moving average area here. So we would say maybe we can buy this uh, currency pair. So we would have a sell order, a sell stop in the euro dollar, the downside. We would have a buy stop in the pound US dollar with a bit of a distance to the current market price. And we have the Australian dollar, which is quite interesting. On the other hand, and that also happened earlier this morning, numbers from China, economic numbers from China were extremely bad export and import numbers were not good. So the uh, the Chinese economy as the second biggest economy globally is obviously not in a positive scenario, not in a good situation right now. So the Chinese economy weakens a strong um, kind of uh, uh, a country with strong ties to China is Australia. They export a lot of uh, iron ore, among other things, uh, uh, to China. And that could potentially lead to um, some sort of further and negative momentum in the Australian dollar, which also could impact stock markets. We don't want to go too far, but the Aussie is currently weak and the Aussie is currently approaching another nice support area, which could be broken. So there would be another opportunity maybe to place uh, another sell stop order here. And uh, in this case, we use one contract uh, here um, since we already have two contracts on the other um, uh, trading opportunities uh, uh, identified here, 65, uh, sorry, 64.90, right? Is that correct? 64.90, uh, 64.90, again, no stop loss. I'll tell you why uh, later. That's the current analysis here on, oops, not too fast. That's the current analysis at least here on this currency pair. So again, if uh, the support area is being broken, the support area of this uh, supportive zone here, we could see that the market continues back to the downside for quite a while. We are 26 pips away here, and that's actually quite a long-term trend. If the market breaks this low here, if you can follow me with this, this low, if this is going to be broken, the market might follow next towards this support area, and then later towards all the way to the downside here. So we can see that these trends actually, we can put this uh, take profit towards a lower area potentially again. That's going to be added uh, later. So what do we do next? Now we have uh, prepared ourselves uh, for potential trading setups. We and now would like to focus on the economic calendar. One thing which uh, usually is uh, quite interesting is uh, that uh, organizing the charts towards something where uh, it makes potentially sense to see what the currency pairs are in and off our focus. Uh, let me drag these around a little bit here. Um, so we have the euro dollar on the left side and we stay for for, for this uh, for this uh, idea here for this session in uh, our hourly uh, chart so um, euro dollar heading slightly weaker um, if this market turns down we could see our sell stop order getting triggered pound us dollar uh, turning potentially higher we are still on a sort of support level hope you get this point here if the market pops back in the next 45 minutes pops back all the way above here it could lead towards some further strength again we are about uh, 
uh, here 20 pips away from the current entry price uh, in the euro dollar we are about 10 pips away the likelihood again uh, currently and that's real life data of a potential stronger us dollar could be uh, expected that's at least how markets look currently and then we have the aussie which is a bit further away with there uh, with the sell stop order it's about 25 pips away uh, in this case. So now we are opening opening the economic calendar. So let me move uh, back here out towards the economic calendar uh, in this case. And uh, that's the Chinese numbers we saw. So say, for example, in the next 15 minutes uh, or in the next few minutes, actually we are close by, uh, five minutes maybe, and we are uh, waiting for the news event. Then what we also want to check uh, uh, when we getting when we get to the news event itself is uh, on uh, how is any potential further impact going to be expected does the news calendar have any other uh, currency pairs uh, any other sorry currencies any other big news uh, uh, coming up later and we get here uh, currently live we would have uh, fats harker speech fats barkin speech there's nothing in the next uh, couple of minutes or hours sometimes we have overlapping news events which should be considered but um, now what we would do is uh, we would have our charts set up we would then focus on the economic calendar for the news events to come out and when the news event comes out the next important one, which we're going to trade live, by the way, is the consumer price index from the US. That's such an important news event where we would see and look for, hey, what goes? Initial jobless claims come out <clears throat> at the same time when we want to trade the consumer price index. And then a couple hours later, we have the monthly budget statement. So that could obviously impact any potential uh, trades which we might have. But now we're going to go back to our uh, in the, uh, initial example and move back to the news event. So now we go, the headline says it during the news, when the news are going to come out. So now what we get, we got uh, the economic calendar reveals, we got a 25 basis points rate increase. And we look in our charts and we see, yo, the US dollar appreciates that this order is getting triggered potentially, right? Expecting that the market heads back to the downside and we would see and look for uh, that uh, our entry price get triggered again a bit hypothetically because uh, the markets are not moving right now but then we observe that the market is dropping all the way back to the downside here and so what we do is still check the market moves at the event plus 30 minutes so we stay focused on the charts we look at what goes and we also watch for potential surprise setups because there might be something happening that we don't see we don't know anything uh, what else is uh, uh, happening in regards to the news we only know we had a 25 basis point rate increase that was somehow expected but the rate statement revealed that there are further rate hikes uh, potentially to follow and the us dollar is getting up some strength so euro dollar is currently weakening the pound us dollar obviously also weakening as it kind of does at the moment here and the aussie is weakening as well but the market has only weakened about 15 pips so we are still quite far away from our entry price from our sell stop order uh, from getting triggered so we look back and check for potential situations uh, which might happen and now it's time uh, to focus on the press conference is there anything uh, in terms of news which uh, we get out of the press conference so press conference means basically that uh, half an hour after the event jerome powell is uh, moving forward and uh, he might uh, uh, first of all he usually reads the rate statement he says okay the central bank the governor so we have decided that uh, the interest rate uh, remains at appropriate levels and uh, yet inflation is moving somehow down but not uh, towards our two percent level so more needs to be done blah 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 and then thereafter and that's the interesting part where we get potentially surprise setups he's open for questions from the audience like in this press conference we can observe here on the picture in the picture on the right side and that's exactly where we need to be careful with our open positions one idea could be say the market has moved into our favor say the um euro dollar sell stop trade has a tri has been triggered and the market keeps on moving slightly to the downside so we are in profit of like 15 to 20 pips here um meaning from this area here we just move 15 pips to the downside we might say okay let's close this trade out 
at uh, a lower area because we are heading close by we're heading close by to this key support zone the support zone basically is the zone where the market in the past has repetitively kind of been reactive and hence falling back to lower levels or has fallen and then started to retrace right imagine it's a strong zone and you first need to take your huge drill out in order to kind of break through that zone or you need to have your huge drill to drill a hole into the ceiling in order to go to the attic upstairs and that's not going to happen easily quite often which is the same in financial markets sometimes those zones are quite Hmm. quite easy to break sometimes they are quite uh, hard to break and they need a lot of digging like we've seen here the markets need to dig a lot until basically you see oh the opposite was happening in the end the market was exploding or you can observe that uh, the market was falling it towards or at a certain zone like this one and then boom the market fell somehow further same story here the market went to a certain area and then the, the falling price momentum extended everything like we have seen here in the past basically right so this new support zone talking about this area here the market went high on the market here after the news event went towards this zone and boom straight went through with uh, this huge amount of uh, volatility we have uh, observed in the past so that's at least uh, how this uh, works so back to our current chart so given the fact that uh, the news were as expected, 25 basis points rate hike, euro dollar going somehow lower, and uh, we are currently waiting for the press conference. In a few minutes' time, Jerome Powell is going to start talking. So what we would say, okay, let's say our trade is already in profit here. We close out this position, realizing some profit. Why? Because whatever Jerome Powell might say, could lead towards a potential surprise. The market could uh, be of opposite direction. Vice versa, we have the pound US dollar. Obviously the market is moving to the downside. Would we like to close our buy stop order? Maybe not yet, but then the Aussie is still kind of here nearby, in this case is nearby the support zone. Is it going to break the support zone here? We could say yes, we might say no. We don't simply know, so our uh, our sell stop order is still quite uh, quite a bit away from this current area um so that might be uh, a good reason to leave this order here and say okay if the market breaks we are still no sorry we are at the red line somewhere we said we moved a little bit we are still like uh, uh 10 15 pips away so this order we could potentially leave in the market as well as uh, uh, the uh, potential other order here the pound us dollar order Jerome Powell steps forward. He's reading his uh, script of how he expects the markets to move and what potentially could happen. And a little bit of a surprise is happening because the audience is asking Jerome Powell, how's it going? You've just raised rates uh, by 25 basis points. We can see inflation is going down. We can see that last week that was uh, the news non-farm payrolls are reactive. So less uh, jobs are being created in the economy. The economy obviously is uh, having a step back. Today, the news came out that banks in the US have been downgraded, smaller banks, uh, just because uh, obviously the impact of uh, current rate hikes, uh, uh, the real estate sector, among various other factors like the bond markets, momentum, I don't want to go too deep into this, causing banks to cause some, some problems, having some issues. So there is a response in markets. And then the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the junior correspondent is asking, so how many more rate hikes will we have towards the end of the year? And then he says, hey, uh, you know, guys, uh, the inflation is moving down. We know that we're pretty reactive to this, but uh, we would be stepping back a little bit and we would kind of uh, uh, be more data dependent. There is maybe another one rate hike going to be there towards the end of the year. Markets see this differently now. We are heading back to our recent price moves. Boom, the euro dollar, as it does currently, the euro dollar is uh, pushing through the roof. Glad we have closed our position. The idea in news trading was to capture a few pips in markets and just be happy to see if there's any any other news events influencing and that's what we said check for potential trading setups but check for market moves at the event plus 30 minutes thereafter and then watch for potential trading setups like this uh, press conference and um, the press conference revealed that now the pound us dollar is gearing up momentum towards our entry price so we say hey maybe the market is pushing back to the upside there's some slight dovishness 
in the wordings uh, uh, from Jerome Powell. Dovishness, as in like he's more cautious what he says, he's more uh, depending on the market, he's not pretty much uh, actively giving information on whether there is one, two, three further rate hikes going to be uh, uh, towards the end of the year. The Australian dollar as well has moved back to the upside here. So and that's now the time where we say, hey, the market is going too much ship to the upside here. Maybe it's safer. Uh, should the market continue back to the upside uh, to delete our order because we don't want to get triggered at the bottom to see the market reversing to the upside? Our euro dollar sell trade has already closed. We made some profit here. And on the pound, we're looking since the market has already kind of moved to the upside here to if we should or if we would potentially get another entry to the upside. Further questions, more questions in the press conference here happening. And we identified our zones, as we said. So um, the market has really respected this. Uh, it's again, it's all hypothetical, right? So there's no handbook on how to trade this. This is one idea of doing it potentially in the future. But uh, the idea obviously could be like how to react here. Should the market move back to the upside? And uh, the dovishness in this case, uh, the uh, soft words from Jerome Powell leading towards the US dollar's potential weakness. And that's exactly why we said it's important to know key support and resistance zones and wait for potential surprise setups. And the surprise was that we had the rate increase, but the market uh, or the US dollar was selling off. And we leave this order in the market and wait for and after the news event what's happening. The aftermath right now. Watch out for potential other news events. We talked about it. So the idea that uh, the markets might give us, or the press conference it's still ongoing, uh, giving us further uh, momentum to one direction or the other. The idea, obviously, here for potential other news events is more like in the next uh, half an hour, one hour, two hours. So what's the outcome we might uh, we might get here? Hold on, that's the wrong screen and now so watch out for gdp news so, uh, in the corresponding and that's a good example gdp figures could move the market say gdp figures come out in one hour two hours from now given after the actual news event so we should focus on the G uh, gross domestic product figure why simply because uh, if we're going back to our chart we can observe oh we have a buy stop in the pound us dollar is that a good opportunity Potentially, yes, but it could kind of get uh, a bit of an issue when we f take into consideration that the GDP figure could again be a miss and then the market moves back to the downside. In any case, the market is moving higher, press conference ending, the dollar turning slightly weaker and we have our position open and we now think, so how do we do and what should we do in order to kind of uh, secure our trade? So. The idea what we do is that we secure our position with a stop loss and that's quite easy the market has kind of gone here our trade gets triggered so now it's time to adjust this position with the stop loss still it's still the order obviously here but uh, the stop loss we want to put just below the low here which sits at um, 127.35 127.35 so this position, which has been triggered maybe a bit higher here, um, uh, is uh, just active in the markets. And uh, we decide we don't want to spend too much time. We also add a take profit level because there are certain news uh, kicking in in like an hour, two hours from now. Our trade has just been triggered and is sitting at entry. Basically, we don't know much on how, how much momentum this, uh, they are going to come. So we decide to put our, uh, our, our take profit at um, 127. 85 127.85 and now we are basically good to go to leave our screens and uh, just have a cup of tea uh, to end our session guys this was just one idea on how to potentially trade news events uh, please let me know if you have any other questions obviously the news events are not always like this but it's important to first of all plan your trade and that was my uh, um or that's that's my myth uh, mythology here in order to assess markets try to find important support and resistance levels first right so and if markets trade within these levels and they are likely not going to break higher or lower unless we have a strong surprise move these strong surprise moves in recent say history have not been so so high so the chances that any tried any market breaks out extremely into one direction or the other is rather a bit limited and with that 
markets tends to uh, remain in certain ranges. Uh, one of our open positions we have on currently is the pound against the Australian dollar that's moving to the upside. That's a breakout. So any of these levels could happen and any of these uh, uh, positions could obviously be quite fruitful during webinars. Say, for example, the market trades here slightly lower and uh, uh, the idea could be then to add a buy stop above the high as uh, one believes that uh, the, ma the markets uh, kind of potentially could break the high points should there be a strong move, say, interest rate decision in uh, in the UK. And there was a surprise rate increase of not only 25 basis points, but 50 basis points. And then obviously the pound is going to skyrocket. So preparing for such a move could be another fruitful idea, as well as saying, OK, if the market doesn't do anything much, we could also fall back to the downside to benefit the Australian dollar. So <clears throat> those are quite um, quite often the uh, interesting moves first of all as well is uh, um what could be a good idea is adding buy stop or sell uh, sorry sell sell stop and buy stop orders slightly above or below uh, interesting levels like we said in the pound australian a buy stop slightly above the high in the euro dollar a potential sell stop slightly below maybe the next support level right below this one which would be just 15 pips away so if the market falls the likelihood that also this level breaks could be simply there or if somebody has a strong opinion about a certain news event placing a direct market order but that's obviously quite tricky because uh, if you place say a sell trade here directly and the market just rocks to the upside like it was happening here boom, then you basically have a bit of an issue because uh, you might uh, you might get uh, not stopped out since you likely not apply a buy uh, sorry a stop loss at the news event by the way the reason why uh, why it's not always advisable to put a sell uh, a stop loss is because of such moves when the markets erratically move into one direction or the other quickly we might not see the market exploding as we said earlier but we might see that the market goes slightly higher gets a, gets a stopped out to then fall back further as uh, as we examined and identified here before i hope this was uh, helpful to you again that's uh, the general idea plan your trades first look at the markets focus on support and resistance levels focus on the economic canada it's quite good to have like two or three screens usually two at least uh, added to your uh, to your workstation so you could focus uh, on certain news calendar on and the calendars on one screen and place or uh, focus on your trades on the other as well as obviously then looking at the economic calendar what other news events there might be what press conferences could lead towards surprise moves after a news event we had it recently quite often that the news event kicked in the interest rate was adjusted as expected not much of a move but only during the news event sorry only during the press conference and quite often also recent to the end towards the end of the press conference only then volatility kicked in and markets moved sharply and obviously when leaving the charts or the screen or the workstation uh, to go to bed uh, like it's quite often in the evenings in my case here adding a stop loss and potentially a trade profit is the key uh, takeaway here for this thanks everyone Happy trading as always. I'll talk to you later and thank you for tuning in. I was glad that you all made it here. I hope this was helpful for you. Uh, my colleague Marius has another webinar session on Friday, I believe, here with some background training for you guys. So stay tuned. Uh, Marius and me, we're also going to trade um, the CPI figures live on Thursday. So join us in and see how we can manage to find potential trading setups. Uh, until then, bye bye. See you then. Ciao, ciao.